Hey guys, in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about um, how we're going to tighten our code up a little bit. Um, <laughs> we, we've been doing a pretty good job. We have a lot of things right, but there's more that needs to be done in order to ensure that we are following um, the HTML language specification um, as it's written by an organization called uh, W3C. Now that's different than W3 schools. <laughs> A lot of people like to use the W3 because it's www, right? So anytime you see W3, they're, they're really discussing uh, internet stuff. Uh, so W3C is an organization that produces, improves, works with the HTML language specification. And we want to follow that, that specification um, as best, I mean, perfectly. Uh, really and we want to follow up perfectly because we would like for our web pages to be cross browser uh, compatible so we don't want our web pages looking different uh, between browsers if we can avoid it in any way and the first thing that we should do in, in order to attempt that is make sure that our code is written according to the it follows the specification uh, precisely so fortunately, in order to know how, whether or not our code is following the specification, uh, there is a, a website that can check our our, our, uh, our, our our pages for us. We can, we'll enter, I'll show you how to use it. We'll just enter our, our URL and the website will check and tell us what is wrong with it and what needs to, with our, with our page, uh, what needs to be modified. Um, so we're gonna take a look at that today and um, Maybe I'll take, we'll take a peek at um, what I've kind of done on my uh, computer here, my, my uh, home machine, to help me keep organized when I'm modifying files here. Uh, I don't want to become disorganized and lose track of where I am on Copeland. All right, so I want to make sure if I make a modification on the index page here in my local machine that I, I get it back in the same place <laughs> on Copeland. So I'm, I'm just going to be careful with the way I have things organized on my local machine. And so maybe we'll take a little peek at that too. So let me see if I can move us on to um, something else. Um, why don't we look at WinSCP first and just see how I've set up my directory structure. Okay, there's my WinSCP. And so what I'm uh, attempting to show you here is, let's see. Oh yeah, I can see uh, my mouse here. This is my local machine, my own home computer. This on the right hand side is Copeland. I know if you're using Fetch, um, things are gonna look a little bit different. Uh, what, what really is happening with Fetch is this, my, my side here is really kind of unnecessary. I could see that using Windows Explorer. And so in Fetch, you only see this side, right? And, and so when you drag and drop files between the two here, it's, it's nicely contained. One window with two panes kind of um, keeps things. I, I, I feel like it's a little more organized this way than if I had two completely different windows open. One uh, Windows Explorer and one WinSCP where I would go into my Windows Explorer, grab a file and pull it into WinSCP. This just, I believe this format f feels to me uh, like I can stay organized more. And that's very important when you're using this. <laughs> you keep an organization going. And I think uh, most people would agree with me, most of you guys, many, many have already had the issue of, for instance, multiple um, multiple instances of index.html, for instance. This can happen with any file. If you have one index.html in sys101 directory and one index.html in your public underscore HTML directory, then that's confusing, right? Because this one is the only one that matters. The other one, you could be in there modifying that other one, and it's happened many times in class already. You could be in sys101 directory modifying an index.html in there 
and then refresh your browser and the browser is looking at this one. Right, so we want to make sure we don't do anything like that. That we always are overwriting whenever we're, we're working on something. Um, one of these files, any file, I'm using index.html as an example here, but we want to make sure we keep modifying the correct file. And so we don't want multiple files with the same name, right? And so that, I'm extending that a little further as we look at my own copy of everything that's here on my home machine. Well, it's not everything. I have extra folders and things on Copeland. Um, you, you probably have something that, that on Copeland that looks more like what I have here. Uh, it's just that I have some random stuff that's been around. And it's just jammed on the shed here and, <laughs> and I need to clean out the shed and I haven't done it. So whatever, this is the stuff that matters. So I want my index. If I modify my index in Notepad++ or in uh, Cot Editor for Mac users, then I definitely, I want to be able to be, I want to be sure that I'm moving that index.html to the right place so that it needs to be at the, the root of my, my uh, web directory on Copeland, public underscore HTML. So in an effort to do that, what I've done, and what I suggest that you do as well, you don't have to, but this is about staying organized, um, is that you reproduce this data structure that you have on Copeland on your local machine in exactly the same format. Now you can do that. You could, I'm gonna just, show you something real quick without actually doing it. See, this is the up one. It's an arrow pointing up and right next to it is dot dot. So this goes to the parent of the PWD. So now I'm on Copeland here, I'm looking. I'm in my home directory. I could grab a hold of this public HTML directory and pull it over here, right? Onto my computer somewhere. And then everything that's in public HTML will be copied and placed on my home machine all in the same order. So then every time, then what I would want to do is have this pane opened to the public underscore HTML that I just pulled over, and this one on Copeland opened to the public HTML that exists there. So I have a copy, and the structure is replicated on both of these screens, so that when I modify something here, I move it exactly where it belongs on the other side. Okay, so this keeping of keeping this organized is of the utmost importance. I'm sure that everyone can agree with that, particularly if you've been one of the people that had the case of uh, uh, of modifying uh, multiple index.html's on Copeland and not understanding why when you go to udel.edu slash tilde username, you don't see the, the changes that you made. All right. So that's all I really want to say about this. So now I have all of these files on my machine and I can open up index.html on my local machine with Notepad++. If you're on a Mac, you could open up your local copy of index.html using cut editor, modify it, save it, move it over here to Copeland, and then go to your browser and check to the username. You know that you till the username, and you'll see the changes to your index that were made locally, moved to the remote machine, and then the browser is going to the remote machine to see what's there. Now you can also see in the browser the local machine, right? I can view this too on local machine. But um, what's important is that we get it to the web server so that it's it's visible to the world, not just you. If it's if it's on oh if it's on your machine, then only you can see it. All right, so that's uh, I think enough about this. So when I'm modifying things here and moving things around, I hope you're following that. And I know fetch looks a little different, but in concept, it's the same thing. It's just that you have only this window. Fetch is only this window. Your own computer. Uh, it's called Windows Explorer and Windows. I don't know what they call it in uh, uh, on the Mac. But um, you, you have another window that you have opened to some location that shows this part. All right, so it's the same concept, just looks different. 
All right, so let's move over and look at this uh, website that can help us see when we have some sort of an error. I'll go to my browser here. All right, so what am I looking at? We're going to come back to that one. I want to start here. So I went to, I did a search for uh, I don't know why I searched for that. I put an S instead of a three. W3C is what I should have done, right? W3C validator. That's what I searched for. I screwed it up and put WSC validator and still got <laughs> what I needed. All right, so this is what I'm looking for here. W, W3C markup validation service. So it's this software here maintained by the W3C organization who's in charge of uh, keeping up the HTML language specification, All right? So I'm going to their site, and then I'm gonna type in my udel.edu, tilde username, address, right? And then I'm gonna say check. And they're gonna tell me whatever's wrong with it. Now there's some things wrong because we've not been extremely thorough with what we've been doing. So we're gonna to have to look through these. I get a list of things that are wrong. Uh, one is a warning here, so that's not so egregious, but the errors uh, really need to be fixed. Um, I, I know why this one is just a warning. We're going to fix it so that we won't have that warning. Um, we should have a language attribute in the HTML so an attribute is something that goes inside of an opening tag, uh, kind of like uh, uh, href uh, is, is an attribute for the anchor element. So you, you start with the A and then next to space and then there should be L-A-N-G. This, this would be in our HTML element though. And we should state what language that the intention of this, this document is, is in. Now this is just a warning because what if my web page had multiple languages on it? Um, that causes a problem. So you may not be able to fix this. So it's not going to be called an error. It's there, I think they're really just saying here, you know, you really should, if you can, you really should um, handle this. And we're going to do it. So these errors, though, they definitely need to be fixed. The encoding... I don't want to encode it as that. We'll, we'll fix that. Uh, and this one, we're going to fix as well. Um, it's a doc. The doc type we, we haven't we haven't mentioned anything about the doc type yet. And we're so there's multiple, many, many. Yeah, I bet you think I can see it if I go back one and I look. Um, no, I can't see that. It's the address, more options. Ah, uh, okay. Document type. Okay, so that's all the different languages that we could use. They're not really different languages necessarily. They're all very, very similar. The XHTML looks very much like um, HTML. Um, but you can see how many versions of HTML there are. So we are trying to work with HTML5 because that is the current version, all right? And let me just look at this real quick. We're going to want to use UTF-8 because it is worldwide, right? And that's the way we want things to be. Um, document type, HTML5, we've got that. All right, so then I'll do my check again and see if there's more errors or less or what. No, it's the same. All right, so we're gonna. I'm gonna try to eliminate all of these errors, and some of them here are pretty easy. I can also, in order to figure out what these are, now they've got some some links, but they're usually pretty esoteric. They're they're kind of difficult to follow. So what you can do is go to w3schools.com, <coughs> and you can search, or just just on on Google, just search for character encoding, HTML character encoding. 
And they're telling you a little something more too. We don't want really care about that though. I don't want to character encoding specifically for a Windows machine, right? You Mac users will completely agree with that, I'm sure. And, and even the Windows users, why, why would I do that? I, I want everyone to, I want this to work on all machines. That's the whole goal. Um, and this is a very easy tag we can throw in. So I'm going to jump over to, let's see, I looked it up already. I looked up the Lang attribute uh, in W3 schools. You guys know this site, I think. And so it tells me what I should be using. And this is the Lang attribute. So in, it's inside, it's an attribute, like href, but this one's called lang, equals, and in quotes, the, the language that I want to use. It's Eng, English, but it should be, mine in particular, or, or maybe yours too, should be US English. Oh, this is the one I want to use. English-US. Because I'm being very specific. I, I am writing this in US English, not... Um, um, English that's used in Great Britain, for instance. This is, an, is a whole new element. It goes above the HTML element that's in our document currently, right? And so lang is an attribute in the, in the HTML element that we already have. So what I really want is to just grab these two. I'm going to copy those. And then I'm going to jump into, let's see where we are here. And I'm going to jump into my notepad plus plus that I've already opened up my index.html in, right? That's it. All right. I'm just going to paste these in here and then I'm going to clean up how they're going in there or where they're going. So. This doesn't look like it's, let me just put it in and just fix it, whatever needs to be fixed. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. Let me try something here. Yeah, all right, good. So that, I have the whole new element here doc type element, HTML. I don't know why it doesn't say HTML5. It's just, this is the way they're doing it. Uh, and now I've put the language element in. So now I'm gonna save in Windows here. I can do Control S. And this header up here at the top used to be red, indicating that there was something changed in the document and it wasn't saved yet. So now I just saved it. So I can now go back to WinSCP. Well, first off, let's do this. Let's go to the browser and let me prove to you that currently, here's my page, Boyer's homepage. I'll refresh it right now. And you know what's gonna happen here. We will not see your page source. We do not see those changes, right? HTML head still not right, so nothing changed. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open up my WinSCP here. There's yours, there's mine. And so that's the index that I just modified. And if I'm paying attention, I would be able to see the time and date and know that it was true. I'm just gonna pull it over to Copeland I'm gonna double check here. I can double check my uh, my permissions right here and make some modifications if necessary, but they're not. So now that modification that I just made is on Copeland. So if I go back to my browser, I should be able to refresh. Okay, let's do that so you can see that. Come here, I'm gonna refresh. And then we'll take a peek at the view page source all right hopefully you see that yeah i think you see it oh yeah
Yeah, you can see it. All right, and so there we see, now this is in my browser, right? Remember my browser went out to Copeland, requested this page from Copeland. This is the page that was returned to my browser. And here are the modifications that I made. All right, so I was able to make the changes on locally, move the file using SFTP over to Copeland, and then test Copeland to make sure that the changes are, are uh, uh, did go through. So that's that's good. So we know it's there. Let's jump back over here. And I'm going to try to, I wonder if I just refresh it, if it'll be enough. Yeah, I got rid of two of them, didn't I? Mm, even the warning's gone. Oh, you know why? Because we did both of those in one shot. So let me, uh, here, I'll show it to you right in the browser. Where do we have that, right here? Remember the language issue? One of them was the language issue. That was the first one, the warning. And then here was the other one that specifically said I didn't have a doc type HTML in there. So those two are handled. Now we have a few more. If we go back here, let's see what the next one is. Oops, where is it? Here it is. So now we'll try to knock off the next one. So I wouldn't try to do too many at once. Um, this one's an easy one because sometimes one error can cascade and that error can cause the next error, which causes the next error, right? So by, by just pick them off one at a time, maybe two, one, two at a time um, and figure out what we're going to do with them. The IMG element must have an alt attribute. Okay, this is a rule in existence uh, because we should always be ready to handle um, or to provide something for users that are that are uh, working with screen readers. All right, so if there's someone with uh, vision disabilities. Um, there should be some alternate text that the screen reader can read. So we wouldn't know necessarily anything about, I, I mean, I've made this image called hacker.jpg, so the, the name in the image kind of fits in with what the image is, but it, that doesn't necessarily have to be true, right? I may want to put something specifically for, I need to, right? They're, they're demanding it. They're saying this code is not compliant if you don't have an alt tag in your uh, image. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So let me get Notepad open again, there we go. And so we'll go to find my images right here. I'm gonna put it at the end so I don't. Alt equals hacker. hacker image. So that is what the screen reader will read now. If someone, if a screen reader is reading this, it'll, it'll just say there's a hacker image uh, in this location. So control save. All right back to WinSCP. WinSCP. I got a, I got a, move it for you guys to see it and then get WinSCP open. So this has been modified and I didn't check the date before, but I know it was. So I'm gonna run it on over here, drop it, save it, back to my browser, get you so you can see the browser. And I'm going to refresh and see if that goes away. Yeah, and I'm down to one. So character encoding, we wanna use UT, F8, um, so let's see, I'm going to look this one up real quick, I'm going to open a character encoding, I'm going to go here and I'm going to make sure that I use exactly the, the right <coughs> um, attribute and I will um, 
you can search let me look this up okay so here at w3 schools i have found html attributes on the left hand side here you can see it and so now i have an html attribute reference so i can see i've been mentioning attributes a lot and so we can see the how many of them there are right there's lots and lots of them so we want something to do with character set and we can look this up lots of different ways but i thought it would be interesting to show it to you that way so there i found it right there if i click character set then i'm actually just looking down here so i can see an example all right and so here's an example and i see that it's a meta tag right here and it belongs inside the head element so i'm going to copy i'm going to go back to notepad plus plus that's for you one for me and inside the head I'll leave the title first, I guess. And I want to place this right under V. Okay, so head is the parent of two elements, the title element and this meta tag. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Wait a minute, before I do it, do you see how on mine that it's red up here? Save, and it's not red anymore. So I can't, it helps me not forget <laughs> that it's not saved. All right, so then back to WinSCP. WinSCP here for me. Move index over. And then back to the browser. And you tell that edu, that's the, the right one. That's, just close that and this one and refresh oh that's not what I meant to do I, I guess I will view page source and we see that my meta is in there now right and this came from udel.edu okay so that's all right what we really wanted to do is check this right and make sure um, that error went away. So I'm gonna refresh again. There we go. Document checking complete, no errors or warnings to show. <coughs> right here. So, so that gets us started something has happened to the camera here well we're accustomed to that happening aren't we it's because something came through on my phone okay there we go it's not going to come through right whatever i'm in there dark you see me very dark uh, so we we looked at a few things um that uh, that website can find lots of different problems with your code. I wasn't so concerned with other issues, like if you have a, for instance, if you have a missing element. Let's see if this works. It's worked before. Oh boy, I made it worse. Um, if. Yeah, if, if you're if you're if you're missing, for instance, the head element altogether, it will sh it will show a, a, an error for that. It would say you're you're missing the head element. If you had the script element inside of the body element rather than inside of the head element, it would see something like that as well. So there are lots of different things that um, can be determined by this site. I would note that it will not notice or complain about white space. White space is something that um, we as programmers are putting in here so that we, because for humans, it's for human human use, the white spaces. The, the browser doesn't, doesn't affect the browser. So the fact that I put however much space I did here is irrelevant to the browser. 
but it does make it very clean for us to see, right? I can see that the body is here and there is one, two, three. What's happened to my paragraph here? It got undone. So see how that paragraph, the way it's spaced there or indented there makes it look like it belongs to A, like A is the parent and it's not. So I don't know why, why that did that, frankly, because I would never have written it that way. So I'm going to move all those back like that. So I want each of these elements to be at the same level, right? So uh, since the indentation would happen if it belongs, like the H1 belongs to the body. The body is the parent of the H1. The A is not indented under H because A does not belong to H. It's independent of H. So I'm be calling these, uh, uh, while we were talking about the spacing, I've, I've been calling them siblings. Right now, if there's some element here where, for instance, I have EM, I just did it in line, though it's an inline element, uh, but it, it does belong to bold. Right? Bold is the parent, EM is the child of bold. Or it's actually just messy. This isn't a parent child. I wouldn't call it a parent child. A parent child is more like this one. Body is the parent. This element is the child of body. And the granddaddy of all elements is HTML, right? HTML is the out is the granddaddy. And that has two elements, a head and a body. The head and the body are at the same indentation. So I can see clearly there's one, two parts to the HTML document. The head, this title element, is a child to the head element. The meta tag is a child to the head element. The meta tag is not a child to the title element. And I can see that visually by the fact that they're at the same level. One doesn't belong to the other in any sort of way. They're independent elements, independent HTML elements that both belong to the head element. I'm sorry to belabor this so much. It's just that it's so important. I, I can't stand even looking at mine like this. The fact that this somehow got moved over. Um, I, I'm going to have to move this one over too. So. But I won't do it with you guys sitting there waiting. So that's all I've got for you in this video. Hopefully that will work for you. You still can't see me. Not only can you not see me, but I'm now upside down as well. So anyway, I will step out on this one and see if I can't figure out how to fix some of these things before the next video.